In this video, we're going to be truing up the cases, getting the bottom and top end of this motor all back together. So this outer clutch cover, uh, we had to replace because every thread that was on the one that came with Project 93 was stripped. It was stripped. Somebody had tried to fill it with silicone. They had zip ties stuck in it, holding the stupid thing, trying to hold the screws in. It was horrible. So <clears throat> this one's in really good shape. We ended up picking it up locally off of Marketplace. A local guy had one. I said, okay, I'll come pick it up. Anyway, uh, I want to do something a little different with it. So I really want to polish just this part of the case. And then when the outside clutch cover is Cerakoted, it should look really good, hopefully. So we're going to give this case a real good polish with some Autosol. And uh, I don't want to do it too much with the steel wool. That's a lot of work. So I'm going to put the Autosol on this uh, Scotch-Brite pad, go real slow and buff it all in and get this kind of effect. I really like the finish the Autosol gives. Uh, I've used it on a bunch of the builds, guys. Uh, check out the other videos and you guys can see how this stuff works on the frames. You can get this really polished look or that brushed aluminum look by using it. It's good stuff. So when we're talking about mating the surfaces of the case together, we, what we want to do is see if this is flat. So I use a nice straight edge and we'll come along here and and see how straight that is. Um, one thing I have is, this is a, a piece of granite from a countertop place. I actually stole this one from my mom. I don't know if she knows I have it yet. But this is, uh, uh, they made her a cutting board out of like the sink drop. But if you go and get uh, a chunk of this, it, it really does help. You can put it on there and see if it's flat right away. Uh, or you can use a, a ruler and check across in a bunch of different spots to see how flat you are. This case is really flat, that's good. We are gonna clean it up just to make sure we have a nice seal. We're gonna use 600 uh, grit, like wet sandpaper and, and go on it. I'm gonna use 1000 because that's what I have. I ran out of 600, but 600 would be fine uh, to clean up all these surfaces that a gasket has to seat to. And what you're gonna wanna do is get yourself, this is just a paint stick, but anything that's sturdy, that's flat, that you can put on to help you sand will be good. If you had a piece of uh, some metal that was flat, uh, I like using the paint stick because it does give a bit if I roll off, it doesn't, it's not as rigid. And then I just wrap the sandpaper around it, like so. And then I will not even rip it off, I'll just leave it because I'll rip it off when it wears out. And I'll sand the surface and you can see it's good here. Even though it's flat with the ruler, it still has high and low spots. But we want to clean it up so we can get a good seal. Obviously the gasket helps with that as well. What I'm looking for is any little nicks, anything like that. If there's a scratch that goes straight across, uh, that could cause a problem for you. This case is really good. I don't see any. This is the one we bought off the guy, so it's in pretty good shape. And you're not trying to remove a lot of material, guys. We're just trying to make sure that the surface is more clean and flat. So what we're looking for guys is to make sure the surface that would seal this inside cavity where the oil goes is, is sealed. Like there's no scratches going all the way out. If there is, you're going to need to sand down to that, but keep your case flat at the same time, checking it whenever you need to. And we're not really removing a lot of material. We're just uh, trying to true up the cases. So 
So our other case, the group mates up to this, had a repair done right here. So you can see, and I don't know if somebody put a chisel in there at one point, maybe drove it in trying to get the cases apart. Ah, who knows? But it doesn't go all the way through on this case. It's close. But we're going to be able to, to sand this up and get it all trued up. And the gasket will cover some of that. We just want to make sure the crank gets a good seal. That could have been why they used all this JB Weld when they had one heck of a mess going all the way around everything. Yeah, she's perfectly flat, guys. All the way across, no gap. Even over here, it's all perfectly true in line. Perfect. So one trick you can do with something like the head, uh, our head's really flat, but we're just gonna clean it up, is you could put the sandpaper on your super flat surface and just run it back and forth, keeping it firmly against the paper if I had bigger sheets, we could tape it down. Um, but just cleaning it up and then you can see guys, that's a perfect flat surface. We can see a little bit. We're gonna do a little bit more, like areas that weren't touched. Spin the paper around. This 1000 grit really doesn't remove much of anything. Check the cylinder. perfectly flat. All the mating surfaces are the same height. That's really good. Um, you could do the same thing. Our cylinder's in really good shape. We're not going to bother uh, this one because it's got no gasket on it. We're going to check our machine surface up here. If your machine surface of your cylinder's out or has like a wobble in it, you might want to think about getting that taken care of by a machinist. They can remove the studs. They can easily clamp this in and, and do a little, like thousands of an inch pass and true this up for you. Ours is perfect. Wasn't overheated or anything. And guys, I want to show you. So our cylinder, um, this is actually uh, an iron cylinder. Uh, it's aluminum cylinder head, sorry, but it has an iron sleeve in it. And we were able to, to hone that up really quick with a quick hone. I uh, thought I filmed it, but I didn't. And you can see in there, there's no flaws. Everything looks really good. You know, obviously there's some dust in it right now. It's been sitting. But when we do it, we, we hone it out really quick with the hone. And then uh, we wipe it with oil so it doesn't, doesn't rust. It's really hard to film the cross hatching. But when you uh, hone your cylinder, it refreshes all that cross hatching. When you're redoing a motor, guys, you want to see that X looking pattern. If your cylinder doesn't, it needs to be honed. And most machine shops can do it for you for cheap, couple bucks. Or you can buy your own hone if you plan on doing a bunch of motors. So we ended up ordering a whole engine rebuild kit uh, from Wrench Rabbit. They make good kits, a Vertec piston, great stuff. I've used them in the past. I really like them. Everything's all in one box, nice and easy. And in our box, we've also thrown in, we got the, all the seals, everything like that. You got a crank in this box, pistons here, all your bearings. Now we threw all our OEM parts that we need for this build in here, just to keep them separate. There's a lot of stuff we needed for this bike. But we're gonna go ahead and get all the bearings out, go put them in the freezer so that they shrink down so that when we bake our cases in the oven, we're able to just drop them right in. Now it's just a matter of putting these cases in the oven. Um, we've got the oven set at 350 and we're going to put them in there for about 20 minutes and that'll give enough time for the cases to open up. So in the meantime, guys, while I'm waiting for the cases to heat up and they're in the oven, I like to get out my book. So I got a book of all the uh, explosion views that I printed off and I put them in a cheap plastic thing from your local uh, stationary supply place. You know, Walmart probably has them too. And uh, that way I don't get all greasy. But it gives me an explosion view and then a list. I'm like, what is part 10? And I can look it up on the list. And then I know uh, when I'm reassembling things, not that I didn't miss any little washers or anything like that. So I print these off for a bunch of bikes just to give me a nice big explosion view that I can look at. But we're going to reassemble the power valve. 
So we've gone ahead, we've checked everything for flatness to make sure the gaskets will all seal. And basically what we're gonna do now is just start putting the parts in. We're gonna wipe the parts down really good, make sure that they're clean. There's no leftover anything on them. We've cleaned up the power valves themselves really good. Uh, there's a little bit of dust down in here, I can see, like maybe it's from sandblasting. So I'm going to blow this out with some compressed air so that we don't run into any problems. We don't want any dirt inside the cylinder. The power valve on our 93, you can see there's a profile on it um, and this taper down here. That goes down and that goes up. So it works like that inside the cylinder. I actually like to flip these over. Makes it a little easier for me. So our power valve's down in here, uh, sitting right where we need it to be in line. The taper is the right way. So we'll go ahead and start reassembling the rest. So every time a piece of metal goes into a piece of metal, I like to put a little assembly lube on the part. Um, it's just the way I've always done it. Put that assembly lube in there. It really helps kind of stick it together, but also lubricate it for first startup. Cause this thing's not going to have any, any type of lubrication when it first fires up. <laughs> Just in time, I can hear our oven going off inside the house. We've got our bearings out of the freezer. We're just opening them up. Uh, we're going to grab the cases here in a second. Bring them out so we can drop these in. All right, so we've got our case out of the oven. It's plenty warm. I use some welding gloves to bring it out. And I try and get a better shot of this. This bearing, the main bearing should slip right in. Now be careful not to touch your, well, they're frozen right together. We left them in for a day. Hmm. Jesus. There we go. All right. We're going to grab our bearing with a pair of needle nose pliers, like so. There's no in and out, there's no front and back. It's just a matter of getting them straight. And then they drop right in, just like that. Got the other case still in the oven. We're going to grab the transmission bearings and start setting them in. These bearings, the main bearings, are an interference fit. It means the bearing is bigger than the case. It will not go in. You, you shouldn't beat it in. You shouldn't have to. We want to make sure it seats all the way. Oh, shoot. Yep. One fell out because it's a little bit of a pretty easy fit there. Got our other case out here, out of the oven. Grab the main bearing. Drop it in. Perfect. Nice and easy. This little one is a tricky one. Oh, no, don't you go there. It's hot. So hot. This one here, you sometimes need to tap in with the transmission, uh, the gear shift. I'm just going to use this transmission collar to, uh, of this, the, the fork drum here to press that in. So I did end up putting this bearing in backwards. So we ended up pulling it back out and putting it the right way. So now the cases are kind of cooling down, we can start trying to deal with getting the crank in. So all the, the seal side of these gaskets need to be the same way. And just to make sure that they're all, all the way down, that's the key. This one here is sliding out because I lifted it up. We're gonna get the, uh, the holders in there so it holds it in place. So we've got brand new uh, screws that we've bought OEM from Honda to hold these 
uh, keepers in place. We do not want to use the old damaged ones. Um, somebody had this bike apart a few times in its life and definitely had stripped these screws. So we just want to snug them up. They're not meant to be cranked right down. The bearing fits and holds itself in. They're just meant to keep it there. So you don't need to torque the hell out of them, just enough. So we need to install the crank in the right side case first on uh, on these motors. Nice and easy. We've got a brand new hot rod crank from the Wrench Rabbit kit. I like them. Some guys hate them. I've never had any problems with them. So that's why I keep using them. Well, we got a heck of a situation going on. I couldn't use the actual puller because there's a chunk of the case that hits. So we've got two flat bars going across and we're trying to crank the, the crank into the bike. We're just blocking it up with some wood. We're holding onto it, letting it press against our body. I don't know how good you guys can see, but sometimes you gotta make do. And I don't have a shop press. Maybe that'll be the next uh, investment here. But you just wanna go nice and easy. Putting motors back together is, is not a rush. You never want to get in a rush doing this kind of stuff. Another thing to keep in mind is you want your crank, the, the connecting rod, straight out the top where it's going to be because you don't want to um, get it caught on the case when you're trying to seat this in. We want to seat it all the way. This is actually working pretty good. A little bit more, I think. There we go. You'd be better off to get some, uh, some like, like stock, some flat stock or, or keyway, or even a couple pieces of angle iron. Uh, I just don't have any left in the shop. Otherwise, I would have used that in this situation. So now, we're going to start trying to reassemble the transmission. And we were lucky enough to keep ours together. So we're going to start trying to drop them back in the, the holes they came out of. Making sure all the washers that are supposed to be there are there. All the shifter forks have lettering on them, or they should. Uh, if not, this one is dramatically different than the others. The other ones are a lot longer. You can see that. The other ones are a lot bigger. So the two bigger ones go on one side, and the small one goes on the other. And the letters will show you the orientation. And this one actually goes letters down, and the other ones go letters up. So you can see if we put it in this way with the letters up, the, uh, the shaft would be hanging out here and we want it to connect to the shifting drum. So the letters on this side have to go down and you need to pull your transmission and there's a special spot where they slide into. And then it just goes right there, locks into that groove. Then you take the, the shaft, you get some assembly lube You uh, slide it down in there. With the other side of the shifter drum, you deal with the, the 4R here goes in first. It goes way down here. So sometimes they're a pain and that's where that one goes. We want to find the, the home for it in the, it's got to be put in the right groove so that when you turn this thing, everything kind of cooperates together. You see? Then there's another one. The 4L has to go in on this groove and it slides in right there. 
Then the same situation, I apply assembly lube. I want it lubed up in here. Oh, knock that out. But again, guys, it's a quick process when you've done it a few times, but you don't need to rush it. All these parts lock in properly and everything will work and function fine. And you can see as you turn this, cause it's meant to be clicked with your foot. So we've got our transmission functioning properly. Everything shifts perfect. So as you spin the transmission, you can go into every gear just like it's supposed to. So we're right where we need to be. It's time to put the other case half on this bike. So when you're gonna put your case halves together, make sure you get your vent hose installed where it needs to go. There's a rubber seal on the, uh, the where the water pump goes through here on the other side. So it's in there, the O-ring. Get everything lubed up the way it needs to be. And then we're gonna put the other case half on the bike. So we're gonna go ahead and install the gasket, but what I'm gonna do is I'll take a little bit of grease to help me hold the gasket on, and I put it around the large uh, mounting areas. This also helps if for some reason you forgot something, having this grease on there will allow you to hopefully save your gasket if you uh, go to pull it apart. Set it on where it needs to be, using the guide pins to help us align it. We try and hold the, uh, the crank straight up and down. Hold on to this while we turn it. we're gonna press it down in. Trying to make sure we're going even. We wanna maintain an even gap the whole time. We don't want this side getting tight and this side being up. That's probably one of the most crucial things. If you find that you're getting crooked, don't be afraid to take your, your rubber hammer, gentle taps, or put some pressure here with your hand. Uh, it will go together. Stop and take a look for a second. Make sure we're still even. Keep going. Oh, well, I think we're getting tight. We've got it all the way pressed in. It's time to remove our puller. She's seated real nice. Let's take a look here. So we're gonna cut the excess razor blade here out of the way, or cut the excess gasket with a razor blade. Now it's a matter of putting all our case bolts back in and bolting this back together. So we're gonna go ahead and put our, our seals in, our crank seals. Put a little bit of assembly lube in the seal and we're going to put a little bit of assembly lube down in the bottom here we'll move it around with our finger on the outside edge to help us press it in just a little bit not a whole lot and then it presses down in now the key with this guys is you need to have two millimeters on this dirt bike pressed past the lip so you don't want to push it all the way down till it bottoms out because that's uh, not how it works. So if you have to use a socket, guys, you can go ahead and go gentle with a deep socket. Um, the biggest thing is trying to get it even. A 1.86 is what I'm getting. 
So that's uh, good enough for me. Now the crank seal on this side needs to be set one millimeter below. It's pretty much flush, so now we'll just press it a little further. 1.1, so that's pretty good. We're gonna, uh, we're gonna go with that. So at this point, guys, we're gonna go ahead and put the motor in the, uh, the motor stand. Give us a little better access at putting stuff back together. So we're gonna be working on the left case. So we're gonna use our left case bolt pattern. We're gonna try and exchange these for new bolts. Um, see what we have for this poor bike. What we're doing is we've replaced all the bolts and we're just gonna hand snug them down and then we're gonna go over with a ratchet and just tighten them up. There is no specs and we do not wanna strip the case and end up with a issue like this bike already had, a bunch of damaged stuff going on. Well, we've got all our bolts tightened up. Now we're gonna go ahead and locate the seal. Get our seal kit. Mm -hmm. That's the one. There's a collar that has to go on. Fits inside. But first we need to put the, the seal in. So we'll put some assembly lube down in. We've already put some in the bearing from the other side. Oh, shit. <laughs> well, there's one for the blooper reel. I have literally got assembly lube everywhere. The bottle just let go on me. Well, okay. Well, we're not going to... She's definitely lubed. Jesus. We'll put a little bit on the outside. We're going to shove this in. If we can. I gotta clean this mess up. All right, guys. So we're having a heck of a problem here. Uh, I just wanna show you guys. So when I spin this, I think I'm in neutral. And I spin this, right? So the sprocket shaft is spinning. I can't hold the sprocket shaft. So obviously we're in gear. And if I go down, we're gonna keep spinning. There, now I can't even spin anything. It just locks up and I, I think that I should be able to spin it even though it's in gear. All right, and that's obviously down. I can't go down anymore. So we're gonna try and find neutral. See, I think we're in second. See, we're locked up again. No, first. I don't know. I think we're having a problem here. You know, the funny thing is, and I wasn't thinking about it because I knew this bike needed to come apart, Project 93 here. Um, so I, uh, I never really shifted the gears, I don't think. I don't think I even put it in first or second. I just kind of pushed it around. Pushed it in the truck, pushed it off the truck. So I'm not really sure. Maybe it didn't work before. Our case is coming apart pretty good. And our... Gasket looks pretty good because we used a bunch of grease on it. I'm a little puzzled, but if I turn the shaft for the tranny, I can, I can hold this. I'm in neutral. I should be able to click down. So that should be first. Yeah. Okay. Neutral. Second, yeah. Third. Okay. Fourth. Yeah. Oh, fifth, come on. Is there a reason we can't hit fifth? What is happening? So I don't know if this was causing the problem, but most likely it was. Part 24, this washer, with the weird shaped washer that goes over top of the shaft, it was stuck to the back of part 18, like, like 
the oil was, was holding it together. And I didn't notice it. I thought it was there, but I was seeing the, the snap ring. So anyway, we're gonna get this motor back together and hopefully it'll work this time. So I believe it's working. There's neutral. We're gonna adjust our shifter, put it in the first here in a second. If I can get it. It was working. There's first. Yeah, I can't hold the counter shaft. So there's first. There's neutral. We can hold the counter shaft. So hopefully, this is the last time I have to put this Project 93 motor together. It's just a mess in there, guys. All kinds of stuff going on. So even though we've had this thing apart numerous times now trying to get that transmission working, we're gonna pay close attention to make sure we haven't missed anything. This is where it's gonna happen. You're gonna forget a washer or a seal or something that needs to be in there. I'm just double checking. I've checked the other case. I've checked the motor. Everything looks like it's supposed to, all the gasket. And now we're gonna put the other side on. And hopefully, the transmission gods cooperate and say, yes, you can, you can have it this time. Let's get everything lined up. I think I've got more tools on my bench than I've ever had trying to put a motor back together. We got the moment of truth here, guys. We've semi-installed the Kickstarter and the shaft. I'm holding the shaft, I'm spinning it. You can see I'm spinning it and I'm holding it. And it's in neutral. That's first. I can't hold the shaft. It keeps spinning. That's good. Neutral. Second. Good. Third. Good. Fourth. That's good. Fifth gear. Good. Hey guys, I want to show you some gears. You see, there's a witness mark there. And it needs to line up with that witness mark. This is your kickstart shaft. So some of the gears have marks on them and you have to line them up that way or else you'll never, uh, you'll never get it timed right. Washer, new OEM locking washer, and the nut. This nut's gonna have a torque spec, guys. We're gonna have to look that up. So we're gonna have to crank this down to 60 foot pounds. So we pulled our whole clutch pack out so we can hold the inner basket. We've got our Motion Pro basket holder. Right there, perfect. So now we can go ahead and bend one of these tabs over. I like to use the channel locks to do that. Just grab a hold here. There, now she won't back out. When you're putting your clutch back together, guys, it goes a uh, friction plate, then uh, a steel plate, then a friction plate. If I can get it in there. The steel plate and so on until they're all gone. gone. <clears throat> Another thing to note is you wanna soak your plates in oil. Uh, just get a new liter of oil. I have a leader I use for things like soaking clutch plates and I just keep reusing it because uh, there's nothing wrong with it. It's brand new oil. It's never been in a motor. It's just to soak into the brand new clutch plates. So when you're dealing with the clutch springs, 
I like to use a nut driver. That way it hits and bottoms out. And you can actually get some force on there to push that spring in. Get it started. If you use a deep socket, the screw ends up flying all the way up and then you can never get it. So we're gonna put the water pump seals and bearing in. I want you guys to note the, uh, the seal. So this side needs to go like towards the water and this side towards the oil. So we're gonna press the first seal and there comes with two seals. One seal is for the outside, this one's for the inside. And it gets pressed down in there. like that, make sure it's seated all the way, flush. So I'll try and show you guys. Inside here, so we've pressed the seal into that side, and then the bearing goes here. Inside, there's a weep hole. So if that seal lets go, you'll get oil dripping out of here. And if the other seal lets go, you'll get coolant dripping out of here. So that'll let you know right away um, if your seals are gone, which is, which is a good thing. We'll take our needle nose pliers and our bearing. We're gonna drop our bearing into the case. Our bearing's been in the freezer, so it might go in pretty easy. Uh, we didn't heat up this case, but we could. So same thing we did before. Uh, we're gonna put grease around these bolts and around uh, the pins in case something screwed up and we have to take it back off we want to be able to take it back off. So just a little bit of waterproof grease, just lightly. I've had this before have to come off because somehow I bumped a, a kickstart shaft and maybe knocked the spring out. We're gonna be closing the motor up, guys. So <clears throat> if you get this far and you have a whole bunch of extra parts, you probably need to stop and ask yourself where those parts go. And hopefully you've been following uh, some sort of manual to help you get your motor back together or diagrams at least to make sure a washer's not in the wrong spot like I did on that transmission. The grease helps your gasket stick and not shift around too. Pretty close. The bolts will pull that together. You can see where we fixed the weld there. Looks really good, doesn't interfere. We've went ahead and polished this case a little bit, not enough to cause, what is that? Just enough. Let's get the bolts in it and get her bolted up. <clears throat> Just encourage the guide pin to go home. Perfect. These water pump bolts are also part of the case. So they don't just hold the water pump. They help hold the case together. <laughs> Our big hopes and dreams of doing the top and bottom end in this video, uh, well, they didn't happen. Uh, the bottom end gave us some trouble with the transmission. I did not see the two washers stuck together. I, I thought it was just one washer. And then when I was looking through the tranny, I saw the C-clip and I thought that was the washer. So it really threw me for a loop. I have seen transmissions fail like that before, and usually it's a washer, uh, but usually the washer that's causing the problem is just non-existent. That's what I've come across. Anyway, like and subscribe on the videos, guys. Leave a comment down below. What I wanna know is what color do you think we should do the clutch cover? Um, I, I'm a big fan of like that burnt bronze copper color that everybody does. 
I do it too. I, a, it, it's a nice color. But if you guys have any ideas, let me know. Leave a comment. Uh, also, let me know what you guys do. If there's anything I didn't do that you guys do when you're when you're putting your bottoms and bottom ends together, um, so we can all learn from it. Anyway, thanks a lot for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next one. Working the